Hey everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. I finally got my hands on a Trigicon RCR, also known as the Ruggedized Closed Reflex. And I've hit the point now where I have enough rounds through it where I'm comfortable giving it a review. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why I think this sight is only for a very specific group of people. And even though this has become my favorite closed emitter optic on the market, it's hard for me to recommend. So we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons along with the features of the dot. Let's hop right into it. For those of you who don't know what a closed emitter dot is, basically to oversimplify things, the little emitter that projects the dot onto the screen is in this enclosed housing. You can see on the Trigicon RCR how basically it's a cube and on this Hollow Sun 507 comp, it is open in there and the emitter is right down in there. So really quick, the pros of a closed emitter, why you might want to consider one, one, if you live in a rainy area, this is gonna stop raindrops from obscuring your dot. This also goes for if you work in or around the water. Next up, if you're somebody who rolls around in the snow or the mud or the dirt, the open emitter kind of is like a shovel. It can scoop up a lot of that and then you have to dig in there scooping out all of the dirt, the mud, the snow, whatever. If you haven't noticed already, those are very specific and niche instances. So the closed emitter for most people like us is going to be a convenience thing if you're carrying it or using it frequently, it keeps lint from obscuring everything. It's easier to just wipe off this external lens than having to get in there with a Q-tip or compressed air to blow out your open emitter. So why do they even still make open emitters if closed emitters are so much better? Well, they're a little bulky and they're a little ugly. As you can see for this review, I mounted the RCR on my Glock 20 Gen 5 10 millimeter to give it a real good thumping to make sure that it wouldn't have any internal issues. And as expected, had no problems whatsoever, but in this 10 millimeter, I am running my DPM system. DPM is a sponsor of the channel and they make recoil reduction systems for pistols. They are a great company and they help keep the lights on here at Nightwood Guns. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to check out their website, DPM Systems, that is a dot com. And if you check the description down below, you can find something down there that'll help save you a little bit on your order. Back to the dot, some of the features that you'll notice right off the bat are these huge buttons. I mean, cannot be missed. I'm not opposed to this. I think that the big buttons are really nice if you have to work in the dark or by feel, you're wearing gloves. They also have a top loading battery, making the battery changes much easier. This does have a six year battery life at the five out of 10 setting. Although I always recommend you change them once a year, just to be sure. If you've been around my channel for a while, you will know that I am a window snob with my optics. I like a big window. And while this isn't a 507 comp or an SRO, I have no problems with the window size on this. In fact, I actually really like it. Even with this jumpy 10 millimeter, I didn't have any issues maintaining the dot under recoil. They really did a great job with the window shape and size. Next up, something that I like about this closed emitter over things like the Acro P2 or the Steiner is it does have this little ledge on the back here, which keeps you from thumb printing the back of your lens. That happens all the time on my Acro, where I go to reholster and I end up putting a thumb print right on the lens. But this ledge here is very similar to the Hollow Sun 509T and the EPS. That's something that I praised those sites for. So I appreciate seeing it on another offering as well. Probably the coolest feature about this is that it mounts to RMR footprints, or at least most of them. That's something with other closed emitters like the Acro, you know, it needs its own cut. The 509T, you know, needs adapters. This one goes right on an RMR mount. So if you are a Trigicon fanboy, this is a no brainer because all your stuff is probably cut for RMRs. Now it does mount a little weird and I was hesitant about the mounting system at first, but I didn't have any issues with it, so it's kind of hard to give it a ding for that just because it's weird. In order for them to get this on an RMR footprint, they have these little screws in the housing there. You like slide them in like a notch and then you put a little Allen key in there and give it little quarter turns all the way down. Now this maintains zero, the adjustments are very clicky. I, I don't really have many complaints about this dot and I would even go as far as to say that this is my new overall favorite closed emitter dot. You can feel the quality with this thing. So if this has become my favorite closed emitter dot, then 
why am I so hesitant to recommend it? Before we hop into that, if you've been enjoying the channel, check the links in the description below. Great ways to support me down there. You can find my books on Amazon. You can join my Patreon, which is a great way to support the channel. So grateful for my patrons. They help keep the lights on here at Nightwood Guns. Most importantly, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. The more subs I have, the bigger and better things I can do here. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the RCR so far. And let me know if you would consider getting one of these if you could find one in stock. Finally, you can click the thumbs up button if you've been enjoying the video. Now let's hop into the negatives. So I'm going to work my way with the smaller issues and then move up to my bigger issues. First of all, with the weird mounting system, there are some mounting woes. I think my personal biggest issue is you can't use a torque driver to make sure you are properly torquing the screws to spec. Because the way the mounting system is, you can't use like a normal screwdriver. You have to use the little Allen key and put it in the little hole and give it little quarter turns. And Trigicon includes this little card to help you torque it to spec. And you're supposed to like put it, put it here and then like move the Allen key across the lines. The instructions were not clear and I ended up mounting the red dot to my holster. Because of that, you just have to pry and pray with some blue Loctite. Next up, you are stuck with these screws. I originally tried to mount this on my Bull Armory Axe FS Tomahawk that has a Zev cut that has the two posts that go up that require thinner, smaller screws. And you know, those screws don't exist yet for this system. I'm sure that's something that either Trigicon will make screws for or the aftermarket will pick up the slack on once enough people actually have these. Right now there are dozens of us that have an RCR, but there are definitely some growing pains with this new weird design. My next minor issue is just the aesthetics. I It's starting to grow on me, but it just looks, I, I don't know, I feel like I can't take it seriously. It just looks like a block on there. But we have left mailbox territory and we have gone into cardboard box territory. Look. I'm not exaggerating when I say the success of your mission hinges on how you use that cardboard box. It is a cube. Next up is going to be its limited settings. You just get the one dot reticle. There is no auto adjust or auto brightness feature. You have the manual settings of brightness up, brightness down, and then there is a brightness lockout mode. And that's about it. Now really that's all you need, but I never scoff at additional features even if you might not end up using them. And now we get to my biggest issue, and if you know anything about this dot, you will not be surprised by this. I paid 645 clams for this shipped. And if you know your values, you will know that's how much I have into the actual G20 itself. That is very steep. Trigicon people are going to be no stranger to this, but if you are looking for a closed emitter for your pistol, that's something to consider. That is a very, very steep price. So at the beginning of the video, I said that this dot is really only going to be for certain groups of people. Number one, if you are a made in America person, you only buy American made and you're willing to pay for it, then this is going to be your closed emitter dot. Be aware that the electronics in there are from China, most likely, but the housing itself is machined by American workers. The second group of people are going to be people in active war zones with explosions constantly going off. If you want your sidearm and your optic to survive an IED, this is going to be one of the few that's going to make it through that. So if you are somebody who is particularly hard use, because all the other closed emitters on the market are going to be good for hard use, this is for extreme hard use. If you want the most overbuilt, durable optic ever made for a pistol, then this will be for you and you're probably expecting to pay a bit for it anyways. And finally, Trigicon brand loyalists. If you're a Trigicon fanboy, then it's a no-brainer. This is a great optic. Like I said, it's my new current favorite closed emitter dot. If you're a Trigicon person, you're going to love this site. But it's hard to recommend this site when we have Hollow Sun blowing the competition out of the water. I mean, you can get a closed emitter dot from Hollow Sun for 200 less than this with multiple reticle options and some models even have a solar failsafe. So ask yourself what would be more important in a shit hits the fan scenario, a dot that is the most indestructible thing on the planet or a very durable optic where if you can't find batteries, you can still run it off of solar. And of course, since I'm a nerd, I like to torque my stuff to spec 
I can torque the hollow sun to spec with my torque driver. So unless you fall into one of those groups that I mentioned, the RCR just doesn't make a lot of sense in today's market. The RCR is a great optic and I do recommend it to those groups of people. But completely throwing out price, I do give this optic two thumbs up, just evaluating it on its own. This is well made, well designed, and you can't get more durable than this. But you know what guys, running this channel, I started running so many guns and I needed so many dots for those guns. And to save money, I started tossing hollow sounds on everything. And I'm gonna tell you what, they hold up extremely well. I've had the occasional quality control issue but Hollow Sun has always taken care of it. That being said, I have also had quality control issues with Trijicon, I've had a bad RMR, I've had to send an SRO back. Like, it is what it is. Those are just my feelings and opinions on things right now. Just know that if you were looking at purchasing an RCR because you were super excited about it, I do recommend it. You will be happy. You will not be disappointed with your purchase. I just know that many of you are understandably budget-minded and I don't think this optic is worth having to eat ramen for a month. <laughs> like, it's not that much better. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. It was great seeing you again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out!